I wasn't expecting to see you today. I wasn't expecting to see this, either. Them stupid fatheads. When I told them to get rid of Copen, I didn't expect them to drill him full of holes. What I had in mind was to push him in front of a subway train or help him jump off a building, you know, something delicate. Machine <laughs> gunned in an alley. This sort of thing went out with Edward G. Robinson. What do you expect when you got nothing but a bunch of lame brains in the organization? That's what I want to talk to you about, Jake. This organization needs some organization. I don't go knocking it. You know, I give 25 years of my life building up this organization. I started in a basement with one small printing press making $5 bills. <laughs> Today, Jake Gazzo controls gaming tables, bookie joints, dope, and slot machines. Only in America can a guy have this opportunity. <laughs> a thing like this and you'll wind up in front of a television camera with four senators asking you, what's your line? So I tell them, I'm president of Nickapica Realty Company. I own apartments, restaurants, parking lots. I'm just as legitimate as the next fella. You're not fooling anybody with that front, Jake. The real package is the rackets. And the package is going to explode unless you start modernizing this setup. Well, modern. We beat the government out of Texas like everybody else, don't we? I'm talking about the personnel, Jake. Huh? The employees. The punks working for you. It's very simple, Jake. I'm suggesting that you hire a personnel psychologist to give the organization a going over. Psychologist, eh? We'll make him director of personnel relations. His job is to put every man in the slot he's best suited for. Then we won't have any more of these mugs fouling up. Maybe you got something there, Keegan. I mean, Jake Garzo is just as up-to-date as any big business. Sure, you go ahead. I am one of them, uh, them uh, personal psychologists. Good. There's egg on your chin. The other side. <laughs> you got it. Well, I'll get started on this. Hey, where are you going to find one of them fellas? The city's crawling with them. Our problem's to find one that's young, simple, naive, and won't go around nosing under rocks. In other words, a schnook. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> a schnook. Get the buttermilk. Well, I'm uh, I'm very flattered that the Nickabicker Real Estate Company wants me, but I'm um, I'm quite content in my present position with the um, Dingaling Tricycle Company. I understand from my source that you were just promoted to junior director of personnel. Uh, yes, yeah. Oh, oh, you sure you wouldn't? Uh... No, no, thank you. Well, that, that that was due to certain tests which I uh, I worked out. Uh, through them, I was able to determine that some of the employees were best suited for putting on wheels, whereas others are uh, happier installing nuts. So I merely switched some of the nut people to uh, wheel people, and uh, that way we were up the production of tricycles 300 per month. Well, in a way, you'd be doing the same sort of work for us. We'd like to know the wheels from the nuts in our organization, too. We'd pay well for it. Well, <laughs> you see, I'm, uh, I'm already making... Uh, 4700 per annum. <laughs> I've only been with Dingling now for five and a half years, so the uh, future is... Uh... Nick Becker would start you at 12000 a year. <laughs> Dollars? How about it, Mr. Hines? Have we got a deal? W when, when do we start? Monday. Our office is at 305 Wall Street. Well, Our secretary, Miss Prentice, will take care of anything you need. Prentice? Yes. <laughs>
Excuse me. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. I'm looking for uh, Miss Prentice. You, you're not Miss Prentice, are you? No. Yes, I am. You must be Mr. Hines. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, Mr. Keegan told me to expect you. Well, I must say, I didn't expect anybody like you. That is, I didn't expect anybody who looks like you. Yeah, well, you see, it's sort of a, a hobby of mine. I uh, conjure up the way people will look from his or her name. Now, you take your name, for instance, Miss Prentice. Now, that made me envision uh, sort of a matronly type of woman with her hair scunned back in a bun and a mouth like a male slot. It's hard to disappoint you. Oh, no, I, I didn't... Come on, I'll show you your office. <laughs> Oh, no. For me? Yes. Oh, this is just, just wonderful. <laughs> I must admit, I didn't expect anything like this, either. <laughs> According to Mr. Keegan's instructions, I've uh, lined up a number of interviews for you today. Oh, good, good. Uh, Mr. Fuller should be in any moment now. Good. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the baboons, uh, men, should be in after lunch. Good. Well, as they say, I'm rare to go. <laughs> what do you do with that? I will show you. Uh, we asked the subjects to uh, place the pegs in the holes as rapidly as possible, uh, forming a, a design. Well, you're very good at it. <laughs> well, I, I invented it. <laughs> what does it prove? Oh, it uh, judges spatial perception and coordination. And, of course, it also determines the subject's uh, finger dexterity. Well, you'll find a lot of that in this outfit. <laughs> Come on in, tumblers. Hi, I'm Mabel. <laughs> well, this is the head shrinker, huh? Yes, Mr. Hines, meet Tumblers Fuller. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Fuller? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> well, won't you uh, just sit down, please? If you need me for anything, I'll be in my office. Thank you. I'll call. Uh, tumblers, Fuller. Yes. Uh, Mr. Fuller, now, could you um, please just give me your address first? Well, you know, my uh, place of residence shifts from time to time. At the moment I live over there, the sign of the hip and the pipe, that's in our east, like 123rd Street. Excuse me, the hip and the pipe? Yeah, you know, on the side of the building where I live, there's this big picture. Well, you know, 50 feet tall. It's, well, you know, it's an advertisement for underwear, see? It shows this guy smoking a pipe in his shorts. All right, now, I live right there, you know, between the hip and the pipe. <laughs> well, I guess it's more picturesque than having a regular street number. <laughs> yeah, well, I got everybody in the building tabbed, you know, according to, like, where they live. You know, my landlady, for instance, I call her the old lady of the garter. The, the old lady of the garter. And, and of course, she lives, uh, under the snap. <laughs> By the way, if you ever want to get in touch with me in a hurry, she always knows right where I am. <laughs> Sounds like it's going to be a snap. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, we, we better get going. Um, now, here, uh, Mr. Fuller, I want you to notice that these pegs are arranged in the form of a right triangle. Now, when I say go as rapidly as you possibly can, I want you to rearrange them in the design of a hexagon. Yeah. You got it? Yeah, yeah I got it. Go, All righty. Go! Yeah. <laughs> Why, Mr. Fuller, this is, this is fantastic. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever recorded a finger dexterity as high as yours before. You're, you're not by any chance a, a, a violinist, are you? Or perhaps a magician? <laughs> Legit? Yeah. Didn't they tell you about me? Huh? Well, no, no, nothing more than that your name is Tumblr's Fuller. And then actually, it passed my mind you might possibly be an acrobat. <laughs> acrobat? Yeah. And I'm a peak man. A what? Yeah, I've been called one of the greatest artists in the world, man. Yeah, for cracking vaults, you know. <laughs> Bank vaults, man. <laughs> Bank vaults? Yeah, would you like to see my clippings? <laughs> huh? Mr. Fuller. It's a job I didn't fill it out for, man. Look, look, look you, you sure you're, you're not in the wrong... Yeah. It says here that, that you removed $75,000 from the ball? Yeah, yeah, I kept it, too. My mother had to stall the getaway car. <laughs> well, Mr. Fuller, how, how on earth did you ever make the transition from your, your former profession to uh, real estate? Real estate? <laughs> What's this real estate? Oh, yeah, well, Keegan, he sprung me after that last gig, you know, and he got Gaza to take me on. 
I've been walking a chalk line ever since. Very, 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 man. I tell you, very, very, very. Well, perhaps we can find something more worthy of your talents. <laughs> What's that worthy? Listen, when I see a safe there, just begging to be cracked, I get a feeling like this uh, Michelangelo must have had, you know, when he first saw the Sixteen Chapel. Oh, boy, I get these, these hot flashes, you know. I hear something else, very peculiar. You know what happens? My nose begins to uh, itch like, like, like mad, see, like that. That, that's not too unusual, you know. Yeah. No, you see, uh, any undue or increased excitement will cause a release of adrenaline, which causes the blood to flow faster, which in some people causes an itchy nose. Oh, yeah, that, that even happens to me sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yes. increased excitement, huh? And if I do my job properly, we're going to have you vigorously scratching your nose over something honest in no time. <laughs> honest? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Miss Prentice? I've written out my report on Mr. Fuller, and I wonder if you'd be so kind as to type it up for me. Of course. And it's Mabel. Mabel? It's oh, a pretty name. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gazzo must be a very unusual man. I mean, to want to rehabilitate an ex-safe cracker. Yes, you could say Mr. Gazzo is an unusual man. <laughs> well, his confidence in Mr. Fuller is certainly well-placed. Do you realize that his IQ is 130? Absolutely fantastic. Could this possibly wait until after lunch? It's uh, one o'clock oh, now. Yes, yes, most assuredly. <laughs> Good. Uh, you know, come to think of it, um, I could do with a bit of lunch myself right now. You, you wouldn't think me forward if I... Uh... Of course not, so long as we go Dutch. Dutch? Yes, I'll show you my favorite eating place. All right. Dutch. <laughs> I'll get my hat. <laughs> You know, I haven't uh, picnicked in the park since I was a little boy. Oh, I prefer the pigeons to the people in the automat. You know something? You, you have perfectly beautiful teeth. That, that's true of most adrenal types, though. Oh? <laughs> well, that, it's, it's sort of a hobby of mine. You see, I, um, I, I classify people by their glandular types. And I'm an adrenal? Oh, my, yes. Mmm, vivacious, emotional, um, quick, springy movements. Well-tapered ankles, slim waist, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, fascinating hobbies. Well, I guess that's all just part of psychology. Where did you study psychology? Well, I took my um, B.A. at Trinity College, and then I went on to Michigan for my M.A. and Ph.D. Oh, then you're a doctor. Yeah, I guess technically you say I'm a doctor. I've been a practicing psychologist now since I was um, 28. That young? Oh, that's not so... Um, after all, Alexander the Great conquered the whole world when he was only 21. Of course, he had a neurotic drive. He was trying to get away from a woman. <laughs> His mother. <laughs> well, I think we'd be better getting back to your next appointment. Mr. Gino, yeah. I'm going to show you a series of ink blots, and I want you to tell me what each reminds you of. Number one. That's Shorty the Dope. Shorty the Dope? Yeah. When Peter the Gimp pushed him off the Empire State Building, Shorty looked just like that when he hit 34th Street. <laughs> Shh. Oh, yes. Uh, c come in, please. Come in. Uh, you're Mr. Zacharis? Yeah. Have a seat. No, if you don't mind, I'll stand. You see, my brother sat down once, and they turned on the juice, and that was the last I ever heard of him. <laughs> the thing we trusted, that crummy punk. <sighs> have a jelly donut, eh? No, no, thanks. Why do you have to keep records? I told you, books are dangerous. It's for my old age. In here is every dollar I ever made. Every punk I ever had rubbed out. What's a guy got if he doesn't have his memories? I don't think so, Jake. This Heinz fellow might help us in Chicago. We're weak there. You ain't kidding. Do you know that last year the take on the legitimate business was more than on the rackets? Boy, when you reach a point where you make more money being honest than crooked, it's time for a shake-up. I don't know who the weak link is there. 
grimy McGuire or a jolly boy do for. But I have a hunch Harvey Hines can spot them for us. Just make sure that this punk Harvey doesn't get wind of something in Chicago besides the stockyards, you I know? I thought of that. I've got the perfect chaperone waiting outside. Good. Listen, will you bring him in? There's jelly on your chin. The other side. You got it. <laughs> Come on in, tumblers. <laughs> Morning there, Mr. Gazzo. Hiya, Tumblers. Yeah. Tumblers, we're sending Hines to Chicago, and you're going along to watchdog him. Now do I have to? Listen, I'm getting tired of this babysitting routine. How about a little action now and then, Mr. Gazzo? You do what I tell you, punk. Yeah, okay. You better make sure when this Harvey Hines gets back from Chicago, he still thinks we're in a real estate business. Yeah, I got it. Uh, come over here, punk. You're gonna eat some cash. Harvey Hines. Harvey, this is Millie Blossard. Charmed, I'm sure. I, I'm charmed, too. I mean, um, how do you do, Miss Blossard? As well as you can when your boyfriend's out of town. <laughs> uh, tumblers, can I talk to you for a minute, private life? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, you, you go right ahead, Tumblers, and I'll check us in. How do you, I mean, nice to meet you. Tumblers, is that the egghead that's going to give Jolly Boy the test? None other. Oh, boy, am I worried. The Jolly Boy can't pass any kind of test. You are getting at something. What do you think this guy will take to give the Jolly Boy a passing grade? What are you kidding? He's as square as a bottle of milk. He cannot be reached. He's a man, ain't he? Tumblers! Oh, what? Hey, got your wire. Watch this job you got lined up. Step into my office. I have a double whiskey and soda. No soda. Hey, I, uh... <laughs> I wonder what happened to Tumblers. He said he'd be up just as soon as he made a couple of phone calls. We can struggle along without him, can't we, Harvey? Do you? <laughs> oh, Miss Bossack. Call me Millie. Or Millie. <laughs> Don't you think you ought to put on a sweater or something? <laughs> I mean, you could catch a deep chest cold like this. <laughs> oh, you're cute. Uh, why don't we make ourselves comfy? Well, I... You know, I've uh, never met a psychologist before. Well, we're just like anybody else, only we concentrate on the mind. <laughs> uh, you could miss out on an awful lot of fun that way. Yeah, I never looked at it like that, right? I, I think I better call Tumblers. <laughs> Hello? It's Tumblers. I'm the... Wait a minute. Oh, Jelly Boy, fellas. Hello. Oh, hello. Is this you, Tumblers? What room is this? Uh, just a second. Uh, wh what room is this? 
612, who is it? 612, who is it? Scram, Porky. I was just leaving. It's funny, he hung up. You know, that's the strangest thing. I could have sworn that the first voice I heard was Tumblr's. Oh, he knows where you are. Sit down, relax. Here, you need this more than I do. You know, it. <laughs> oh, 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 I, I, I'm sorry. It's I... all right. It's all right. It's my fault. Oh. But, but, well, you just, you just can't sit around all wet like that. No, that's true. I tell you, I, I'll Why get down to my... Why don't you take your pants off? <laughs> I beg your pardon? Now, why don't you go in the bedroom and take your pants oh, off? No. I'll hire them for you. Oh, I, I can't do that. See, I'll, I'll go down to my bedroom yeah, and take, take them off. Yeah, take your pants off in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. So, listen, you, you should go to... Get in and take your pants off. I'll heat up the iron. <laughs> Here you are. You'll, you'll never know how much I appreciate this. <laughs> oh, hello, Tumblers. I, I, I know this seems to be, uh, but it's not what it seems to be. What are you telling him for? You engaged or something? <laughs> it's very unhealthy to walk around in your shorts. You could catch something like your death of cold. Jolly boy, he just spilled a drink on his pants. I was gonna iron him dry. That, that's for right, him. that's right. This is the psychologist sent by Gazzo. Yeah, yeah I, I was just putting in a good word for you. Oh, so you're him, huh? Okay, you can give me all the tests you want. But don't go around examining my doll, understand? Oh, no, no, no. I'm here for only one purpose to evaluate the personnel. And since uh, you're now part of the personnel, I can start by evaluating you. How about, uh, say, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning? Okay. All right, tumblers. I believe we can uh, be leaving. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, Miss uh, Millie or uh, Bossack. <laughs> Thank you. Exciting evening. is shaking up the whole organization. He has these apes answering mad questions and shifting pegs. Then they send reports to Gazzo and Keegan and heads start flying all over the place. Anything turn up that we can nail Gazzo with? Not so far. Nothing comes through that office that isn't legit. Well, this type of case takes time, but it'll be worth it when we crack it. Now, what about this fellow Harvey? Strictly square. Unbelievable. I tell you something. Thanks, Joe. I wish there was some way we could tip him off. If he gets crossed up with Gazzo and company, he's liable to get hurt. You've had too many lunches in the park. <laughs> Excuse me, Pepper? Yeah. Thanks. down to the office now, but I'll call you in the morning. Bye. Hello, Harvey. Miss Prentice, I have these papers from Mr. Gazzo. I promised to have them out by this afternoon. Oh, Harvey, I'm so sorry I'm late, but you know how the girls are. Yak, 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 yak. Miss Prentice, yak. it just so happens that I was passing the Adlers a while ago when you were coming out. And the person you were coming out with could hardly be referred to as one of the girls. Well, the man you saw me with wasn't really a man. I mean, he was a man, but he... Please, you owe me no explanations. You're a very attractive young woman, and it follows that you'll be having lunch with a very attractive young man. That's basic Kinsey. Really, Harvey? Mabel, 
Harvey, I just... I have no hold over you merely because we once shared a liverwurst and pickle sandwich. <laughs> Dutch. Harvey. Hey. Professor Ray. Yes, he's here. Nick, a big realty. Oh, yes, Mr. Gazzo. I'll be right up. Yes, bye. By the way, did you see what nearly happened to Jolly Boy this morning? Oh, yeah, yes, I read that. Freakish accident, was it? M imagine those movers dropping a grand piano on him from a ten-story window. <laughs> Lucky thing he stepped aside. It's a clear case of those movers not being suited for their jobs. <laughs> They're the ones that should be removed. Yeah, I imagine that's been taken care of right now. <laughs> i tell you uh, why I uh, dropped in on you. I wanted to put the bite on you for uh, 50 bucks. 50? Well, that's... Uh... Quite a lot of money, but... Uh, uh, don't worry, I'm going to pay it back to you tomorrow night. With interest, see? Oh, no, no, Tumblers. I, I don't want any interest from you. I insist. You know, I generally don't borrow from friends, but uh, my associate and me, we got caught short. You know, the price of them getaway cars are going up every day. <laughs> getaway cars? Yeah, you know, I spotted this beautiful safe that's just lying there begging for me to crack it open. Tumblers, you can't do this. You promised me you'd give all this up. I've already given up smoking and drinking. All I got left is dames, and I can't afford them unless I crack a safe once. Oh, more. don't do it. <laughs> now, listen to me. You'll get caught. Not a I... chance. They won't even report this one, you see. Now, Tumblers, listen to me. You, you've got to call this whole thing off for my sake. Th that check. Uh, gee, I, I'm an accessory now. I'm not only an accessory, I finance the robbery. There you are. You see how much I trust you? Like my own mother. <laughs> <laughs> Your mother isn't going to drive the getaway car again. Never again, no, sir. This time I'm running it from her. <laughs> Abel? Hello, Mr. Gazzo. Come on in. Thank you. My, what a lovely apartment. Should be. Cost me a bundle. Beautiful view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very beautiful. Uh, why don't you sit down? Thank you. You know, uh, I never liked this couch much, uh, but with you on it, it uh, kind of makes a difference. You mentioned some papers. Yeah, have a chocolate. Uh, no, thank you. I have to watch my figure. Well, there's no sense in both of us watching it, huh? Excuse me. Yeah, hello. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll call you back from the bedroom. Oh, by the way, this apartment has a lot of them uh, modern electrical gimmicks, you know. For instance, if somebody were to pick up that phone, it flashes a light on my phone in the bedroom. By hand. Yes, it's lovely. Uh, look, here are the papers. I won't have time to work with you anymore today. Uh, suppose I give you a ring, huh? Fine. I'll get them out for you right away. Yeah, yeah, you do that, huh? Hey, uh, uh, wait a minute. Yes? Uh, I had a little black book in my pocket. Now it's gone. Uh, you haven't seen it, have you? Why, no. Uh, You know, that's funny because uh, it was in my pocket when you came in here and now you're leaving. I, uh, I can't seem to find it. Mr. Gazzo, are you insinuating that I might have had it? Take off your clothes. What? Take off your clothes. I think this is the most ridiculous thing. Maybe you want I should help. I'll do it myself. 
Come on, come on. What do you want, music? Get going! Come on, all of it, all of it. The skite, the skite. Really? Take it off. Hey. What's going on? All right, take off that blouse. Take it off! Mr. Garzo, is that what you're looking for? This is it. Well, if you don't mind, may I have my skirt? Yeah, okay, okay. I'm glad you didn't have it on you. It'd be a shame for games like that to walk under a piano. <laughs> That's the break we've been waiting for. We can put Gazo away for 20 years. But how do we get our hands on that record book? We'll think of something, but thanks to you, at least we know now there is one. <laughs> one more. Is it safe for the road? One more of those, you won't be able to find the road. <laughs> Don't tell me. Miss Bashak. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've been looking all over town for you. That's funny. This, this is where I am. Uh, uh, well, well I, I must talk to you, Harvey. Well, since this is where I am, this is the best place to talk to me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, well, come on. <laughs> oh, waiter. Uh, could you bring him some black coffee, please? You know, you ought to drop around my office sometime. We got a little vocational evaluation. Never hurts a girl to know what she's best suited for. As if I didn't know. <laughs> uh, Harvey, now I'm going to get right to the point. Mm -hmm. It's worth five grand to the Jolly Boy mm -hmm. if you'll tell Jake Gazzo that you made a mistake on his report. Mm -hmm. Tell him that the Jolly Boy's a real smart cookie. <laughs> oh, that's dishonest. Oh, he should be ashamed, so ashamed. He'd rather be ashamed than dead. <laughs> a big fun? Thanks. Thank you. Uh, come on now, drink some of this. <laughs> uh, you see, Ever since your report, Jake Gazzo's been trying to put the slug on the jolly boy. Slug him, hmm? <laughs> you know, knock him off. Knock him out. Rub him out. Rub him. <laughs> Deep six him. <laughs> Jake Gazzo is trying to kill him. Oh, that's terrible. He should be ashamed of himself. Oh, that's awful. That's a gangster method. I never heard anything like that. Are you kidding? Don't you know who Jake Gazzo is? Oh, I most assuredly do. He's my boss. Yeah, but he's the number one racket boss in the whole country. Heavens to Betsy. <laughs> We're here. Hello, Harvey. Oh, ho, ho. Ah, ha, ha. What did he say? <laughs> You'd have a better chance of bribing Abe Lincoln. <laughs> I want to have no more to do with you, Mr. Gazzo, or the Nickabicker Real Estate Company. No hard feelings, of course. Nah, nobody can say jolly boys are so ahead. I figure a guy's got to do what he thinks is right for him, right, right Harv? Right, precisely right, old boy. Come on, Billy. Right, old boy. Oh, be seeing you. I'll be seeing you under a piano. Good guy, Harvey.
All right, hold on, fella. Keep your hands out in front so I can see them. Oh, what, oh, oh, what, what, what's this? Oh, what's this all about? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Ah, weed. Those aren't mine. I, I, I don't even smoke. They're under arrest. What for? What for? These are reefers. You are a peddler. I am a vocational psychologist. <laughs> oh, I'm a psychologist. Wait, I'm, 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 I'm Okay, on your feet. Now you look here. Come on, come on. I demand my constitutional rights. I, I demand to see a lawyer. Knock it off, you've been surprised. I demand to make one. What? Come on, come on. Wait, wait, what, what come, you on, say? come on, come on. What, what? I know my Mabel. Hello, Harvey. Mr. Hines. Oh, it's you. I don't think we've John been into... Boy framed you, Harvey. And Mr. McIntosh here arranged for your release. That's very nice of you, Mr. McIntosh. How, how are you able to, uh... Mac is with the Intelligence Division of the Bureau of Internal Revenue. He's my boss. Your boss? Oh, you mean that... Mr. McIntosh, I'm so happy to know you. <laughs> working on the Gazo case for almost a year now. And we nearly had it cracked. Unfortunately, last night somebody broke into Jake Gazo's safe. Gazo's safe? Mm, the record books we were after were taken with the rest of the loot. A year's work down the drain. No, maybe not. I, I think I know who cracked that safe. As a matter of fact, I think I'm in on it. You? I, I think I paid for the getaway car. <laughs> I should have known. Well, do you know where he is? I'll have him picked up. Yes. Yes, I do know his residence, but I, I doubt if he'll be there. Well, come on. No, 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 no. You better not come along. She might be suspicious. She might talk to Mabel and me, but I doubt if she'd talk to you. She? Yeah, the old lady of the garter. <laughs> at, at the sign of the pipe and hip. Hip and pipe. 123rd Street. Sorry to bother you, Mr. Fuller, but you said I should call if it was important. Uh, Mr. Hines and Miss Prentice are here, and they say it's urgent that they talk to you. All right, I'll put him on. Oh, thank you. Hello, Thomas. Uh, Thomas, I don't have much time right now, but we, we know about the job last night. Hey, for creeping sakes. Watch out what you say in front of the old lady of the garter. Yes. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, Thomas. Um, among the items which were uh, removed was a little black ledger book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Supposing I have this uh, particular item, so what? Well, if, if you'll give it to me, they can put uh, Mr. G out of circulation for approximately the next 20 years. You got it. I'd like to see that slob put away. Uh, where can I get it? Well, now, I'm, uh, I'm too hot to hand it to you, but my partner is from uh, Chicago, and uh, Gazo does know him, and he'll deliver it. But where? Fernando's on Bleecker Street. Fernando's? 10 o'clock tonight. I uh, looked. I begged you, I pleaded with you, don't keep a record book. Can I help it if this town's full of crooks? <laughs> Hello. Jake, this is Jolly Boy. Look, I don't talk to dead men. I ain't dying, Jake. I got insurance. I got an idea who knocked over your safe last night. Who? Uh, I think I know a guy from Chicago who's in on a job. I can have him rubbed out for you. No, 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 look, uh... I don't want him rubbed out. I want him tailed first. He's got something of mine. Uh, a little book. I got to get it back. I'll make a deal with you, Jake. I'll get you back your book. You take the heat off me. Deal? Okay, you got a deal. Are you sure this is the place? He said Fernando's on Bleecker Street. There's Bleecker Street and there's Fernando's. We're right on time. Did Tumblr say what his friend looked like? No. Hi. Very 
clever. <laughs> very, very clever. Wearing a wig and disguising yourself as a woman. <laughs> very funny. <laughs> what do we do now? I guess possibly we go in. That's what we do now. This is. Looks like a theatrical warehouse. Uh huh. Maybe we shouldn't have come in here. Yeah, that just occurred to me too. There's probably another door. Didn't you think that you... Oh. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, Heine Harve, or Harry ha Hive. Heine. Harvey oh. Hines? That's it, yeah. <laughs> Just a word of warning, cousin. I got a hunch I've been tailed by the Jolly Boy and his playmates. Oh. You'd better get out of here fast. Yes, yes. Wait, wait a minute, how, how do we get out? Let's try we'll the door again. The door, yes. Maybe if we face the best. I'll never forgive myself. Sorry about this. If we ever get out of this alive, there's a question I want to ask you. Great, that is Gazo. This way. Jake! How'd you know where I was? Never mind that thing. Get away. They can't get out. Come to the door. That way, stupid! No! 
Don't move. Right. Hold it, Otto. Right. Get him in the squad car. I'll take that. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Right. Your motion. On your I've been waiting to do this a long time, Mr. Gazzo. Well, you sure cut it close, Mac. Well, I thought my timing was pretty good. Oh, Mr. McIntosh, here's your ledger book. Thank you. Come on, Gazzo, let's get in the squad car. You little punks. I should have let you rot in that thingaling tricycle factory. Oh, Mr. Gazzo, I think you have a little mustard on your chin. And under the other side. Yes, you got it. <laughs> You said if we got, got out of this alive, you had a question you can ask? Oh, yes. Would you care to risk marriage with an unemployed vocational psychologist? You'd be taking a much bigger risk marrying a girl who works for the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Why? You cannot cheat on your income tax. Well, we wouldn't have to. We're going to have a flock of dependents. 